So uh, if we look at this, um, this is like kind of one of the default keyers. This is almost as bad as the Final Cut uh, keyer. Um, you get these really bad edges, right? <coughs> well, the idea is that you use these super fast ones to create a rough key, and then you can go into here, and uh, under mat, we're gonna go to uh, mat, simple mat choker. What we can do with a mat choker is we can basically eat into our alpha. See that? What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna expand. Whoa. And now, check it out. It's like we have a garbage mat just around our actor. Pretty cool, huh? So that means when we do our keying in, now we're gonna use the key light uh, plugin. When we bring key light into here, all we have to worry about getting rid of, ah, oh, that was a mistake. All we need to worry about getting rid of is this little section around him. We don't have to worry about keying this out and this out and this out. That means you don't need a perfectly evenly lit screen, right? Kind of useful. All right, so um, that's that's really uh, keying. But you notice I've got all these other dudes in here, right? Gotta get rid of those dudes. And uh, that's where user defined masks come in. So I'm just gonna kind of choose where they are. Do, 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 do. And you wanna typically expand your mask beyond the edges of the composition because when you start to feather the masks, um, it, uh, it takes that into account. So you might accidentally get like, if you feathered it and I was just riding the edge, we might get the top of his head in. So I'm gonna take this, um, and I moved it from add to subtract. And now they're gone! Right? Uh, same thing for this side here too. You probably wanna create another one. Ugh. And just a word of warning, if you have this Bezier brush and you don't have anything selected, you'll start making a shape. And no one wants to do that ever. So uh, don't do that ever. Um, so choose the footage. <laughs> and now we're gonna turn this one again to subtract. Again, there's the two mask types. We can either add it or we can subtract it. We want to get rid of it, so subtract. And there, so we have him uh, isolated. There is a bit of a problem. His arm kind of goes beyond into the uh, void. So what we would do on those moments, grab this mask, click the mask path, and like say if his fist goes through on that frame, just move that one point back. Frame by frame by frame, pretty exciting. I'm gonna show you something else that's really cool to do with uh, Chroma King. Oh, and actually, do you guys believe me that there's transparency here or do I need to put in another image? I'm gonna put another image. Yeah, because in compositing, you add things together. So, <laughs> so now he's punching uh, Garrett in the back of the head. Great stuff. Okay, now that we have this footage in here, let's just uh, take a look at it. I'm gonna see if I can still do it. There's another way you can do Chroma King that's not key light. I found this plugin was actually quite interesting. It, it worked a lot of the time. I think it's called Color Range. Color Range. And what you can do with this guy, oh, wait, uh, wait a second. This isn't familiar at all. Oh, oh, there they are. Whew. I was like, where are these things? Okay, so basically what you do, you just keep clicking through, like, oh, I want this. Oh, I wanna, I wanna keep that. Uh, and uh, I had to roto out her gun, I think, but I just went through, I kept telling what values should be transparent and what values shouldn't be. Like his face uh, should be opaque. Uh, <laughs> this is another uh, shot from Battle of a Burglar Door! <laughs> So what we can actually do is use this uh, key light plugin. Kyle, yeah. Is key light free? It comes with After Effects. Okay. It used to be a, a, a Foundry plugin, but now it uh, actually comes with all the uh, versions of After Effects. They bought it. So that looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna see what the screen mat looks like. Um, we can go into these options under screen mat, and you can see it's just like a curves adjustment. So I want to get that pattern of the abrasers uh, as strongly as I can. And that looks pretty good. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this layer. So again, we have above 
the uh, layer that looks like this. It's basically um, what I did is instead of doing the final output, which is uh, transparency, I'm saying, what does the screen mat look like? Now I'm going to use that screen mat to knock out the information on the clip that's normal below. So here we have below normal clip, above the track mat version that I made by using key light. Everyone kind of with me so far? So I'm going to use a luma mat uh, inverted here. And so now I have a layer that looks like it's his forearms and the bracers. Uh, to show you the uh, transparency, I'm going to click on this guy. So you can see this is what we're working with here. So if I use a user-defined mask, I can create something that's just the pattern of the bracers. So this is using a chroma key to isolate an element um, so that we can do some, some cool stuff with it. So what I'm going to do is first and foremost is I'm going to take this layer, the, uh, this layer again that I'm working with now is the one that looks like that. I'm going to take that layer and I'm going to add a blur to it because you can see it's kind of noisy. And the reason why it's noisy is because of color subsampling. Um, so we're going to take this, put a fast blur on it, and that's going to kind of hide some of the noise in it, like that here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pre-compose this, so basically that freezes it, tells After Effects we're, it's like it's footage again, um, with, with the transparency. So I'm going to bring that in, uh, I'm going to bring in another shot of the bracers. Uh, whoa. Let's see, I think that's the frame, right? Yeah? Okay, so I'm going to take the layer on top, I'm going to add an effect, I'm going to add light rays to it. So if we add light rays to the, what we're doing is we're saying, uh, we want to boost the light values on, uh, on these things. You can kind of see what it's doing right now, right? Maybe I'll uh, bring up the intensity of it. Whoa! Oh man, that's so cool. And one more thing, we haven't gotten into blending modes yet, I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but if we change this to add, then it looks a lot more like light, a lighting effect. So now, we've created basically an effect that's not in sync, but you can see uh, that I wouldn't have to actually cut out this pattern frame for frame. I'm using a, uh, a chroma key to do it for me. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah. yeah. And you'd probably want to go through and you want to adjust the mask on here. Um, that's one of the reasons why uh, it's being cut off right there, right? Was we created that user-defined mask. So we're going to have to expand it. We might have to animate this frame by frame, or at least at key moments of the, the zoom in. But otherwise, what we have is a pretty, pretty neat effect um, using chroma keys to, again, break up an image so you can affect just one part of it. You could use that, right? That's, that's practical. That's practical information. Okay, I'm going to show you something that's not practical at all, but they put it in every program and it drives me nuts. Here's a difference key. So you have a plate. I mean, like, in theory, this is a great idea. You shoot your plate and you tell your actor, in this instance, a cat who has an invisible bicycle. You say, cat, jump in a frame and act like you're on a bike. And the cat's like, okay. okay. So it does it. Um, and you say to the computer, all right, so the cat has different light values on the wall, kind of, right? I want you to analyze the plate and I want you to analyze what we shot and say, what's different? Instead of having it shot on a green screen, we're using a plate as a green screen. The computer's doing the analyzing. It doesn't always work perfectly, but say if your background is the sky, it works pretty well. Although if you're using the sky, you might as well just chroma key it. Um, it but you know, if the background's dark, this is a good way to, to go. Uh, difference keying sometimes works, so you might want to give it a shot. All right, blending modes. If you uh, leave here with two pieces of information, what I would say is leave with I'm awesome and blending modes are cool. All right? Actually, no, track mats. Track mats and blending modes. I'd say those are the two most important things I'm trying to kind of uh, push on this one. So blending modes, it's like this is one of the first things I learned how to do and all my work went way up after I learned about it. Does everyone know about blending modes and Photoshop and stuff? No. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to go over it because a few people don't uh, know about it. So here we have an image one, image two, and if we do an opacity mix, we get something that looks like uh, that ugly mess. <laughs> Who would want to get something like that in the upper right? That's just ugly. Um, you have other uh, transfer modes though. You have a darken mode, a multiply mode. Like, look at all these things, right? Like if you use these blending modes, it combines the images in a different way. It uses mathematics in a different way. 
Um, so here, my favorite ones are got to be screen, multiply, overlay, and soft light. I use these ones all the time. Um, I'm not going to show you this one. I'm just going to do it for real. Okay, because I, I have such a good track record of doing things for real today. All right. Gonna delete this. You're gonna like this one actually, um, as opposed to the other ones, which you did not like. You hated. Uh, gonna do some gunshot stuff. So this is from Watch My Beer. This is uh, shooting a gun. Um, so here we actually lit the actress on the day. That's very important for making these things work well. So uh, I'm gonna take uh, some footage I got for free off to internet. Um, this is from Detonation Films. Let's just take a look at some of these. That's pretty cool. Let's just use that one. Why not? All right, so we're just gonna drag that in here and put it on top. And, uh, well, wait a second. There's, there's black and, I don't know if I can use this footage, guys. It's, it, it doesn't seem like it would work, right? <coughs> Wrong. Oh. We're gonna change the blending mode to add. And what add does is it basically only takes with light and, and adds it. Uh, the computer is only multiplying values positively, or it's only adding things. You can see, um, you see that sharp edge though? We don't want that, uh, is that visible on here? A little bit, kind of see it? Very hard to see. Um, you would see it in an actual comp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a curve to get rid of that. Apply the curve to this layer. I, mean, I can actually boost up the light value and maybe uh, take down the uh, the black level of the background, and here we have a much more distinct look. So, we even got the logo too, isn't that awesome? <laughs> so that's how you could do uh, gunshots really easily, or say if you had a flame layer. Um, one thing that I use this effect for all the time, like blending modes, uh, actually I use blending <coughs> modes for everything, but anyways, one thing that I do uh, with it a lot is, uh, oh I should have used this layer. That would have been way cooler. All right, um, next time. Let's drag this in. This is a graphic I made for uh, Dan Pierce and his uh, awesome documentary, Hollow Tree. Thank you. Just gonna fit this to comp so we can see it. Um, I want to give this more of a projector look, right? I mean, it's it's kind of got a little bit of a of a film like old fashioned sepia look, but uh, what we can do is uh, go one step further. I've got this paper texture that looks like this. Can everyone kind of see what's going on there? It's basically I scanned on different pages um, and uh, created a, a loop of them. So if I drag this footage in, I'm gonna put it above here, I can change the, um, this compositing mode to multiply. And so now when I uh, play through it, do you see a little bit of the, the flickering in the image? It's flickering a little bit more. I can make this more pronounced. Yeah, it's a little bit difficult to see. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another curves. I'm gonna darken this thing up. Let's basically create more contrast here. That might be too much. This is what our page, pages look like now. So we might actually start to see some of that paper texture on the image below. So, just gonna press play here. So now you can see the, that we have the paper texture being multiplied. It's uh, basically creating a little bit of a flicker because sometimes it's not as pronounced, right? So if I wanna make something look like it's hand drawn, like an animation, overlay, uh, it's a good overlay to do, a good overlay mode. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, now let's uh, show one more thing that's kind of cool about that, that's kind of putting everything together. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, create some dynamic lighting effects on Dylan. Oops, okay. Uh, I'm gonna change the blending mode here to add. And so now we got some magic happening. Let's, let's do it right when he clacks it. That sounds like a, it'd be a pretty good effect. This is what happens when uh, we make movies. All right. So shift command uh, D will split a layer. And now I can see exactly when this layer starts. I'm gonna change this to quarter just so we can work a little bit faster here. <coughs> so here we got him bringing down the slate, blah, 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 I'm talking. Let's just move this layer. And so, boom! Just gonna move that right over here. 